Round five of the NRL season had spills and thrills aplenty. The Storm won a thriller down at Amy Park. The Dogs won a bloodbath with the Roosters. The Knights won an actual bath with the Dragons. And the Raiders absolutely slaughtered the Eels. Is their premiership window closed? All that and more coming up now. What's going on, guys? It's Bergs here from the Casual Athlete, back at it again with another week of tips and predictions. This week, hitting you on Monday, as promised. I've had a few big weekends over the last few weekends, but we're back with our Mondays, so don't miss out on this one. If you haven't already, please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. We bring out so much content each and every week just for you guys. Also, a reminder, it's not too late to join our fantasy and tipping comps. The links are in the description. Now, let's do what we always do and have a look back at my tips last week. As you can see here, guys, got much better results than I did last week with five out of eight tips correct. The Storm winning down in Melbourne as expected. Geez, it took a lot out of them, but they finally got there in the end with a Wishart crash ball, the last thing I expected for them to win the game. The Broncos just hung in it right till the end and a lot of stuff went their way. The Roosters, now this was the game of the weekend. If you did not watch it, it was an absolute bloodbath. A lot of players going down with injuries. We had Dom Young sent off and the Roosters, well, they nearly got there in the end, unfortunately, not getting the chocolates on this occasion. The Knights, they won an actual bath, as I said in the intro there. It was absolutely teeming down at McDonald Jones Stadium, but the Knights hung in there and they got a good win over the Dragons, who actually have a very good record at McDonald Jones Stadium. The Warriors, I did not mind them winning 13 plus at all. Um, they came out, they were really strong. The Rabbitohs didn't really offer much and they took advantage of it. And the Warriors uh, go to three wins for this season. Penrith, I was a bit disappointed in their performance. No one really stood up. The Dolphins getting that 13 plus win, maybe a bit advantageous. Maybe I'm not giving enough credit to the Tigers. Unfortunately, they didn't get the win here, but they still look strong. And uh, I think the Dolphins have played some pretty favorable opposition at this point in time, but they are first on the table and you've got to credit that. With my Cowboys, they, definitely disappointed me a bit in this game. Chad Townsend getting sent to the sin bin. I think that's a conversation for another day. I didn't think he deserved it at all. Kind of similar to Victor Radley on Friday night. But uh, yeah, they really allowed the Titans to get back in this game. It got down to a six point lead and then felt kind of ended it with his uh, record breaking try for the Cowboys. Great moment there for Kyle Felt and what a club hero, absolute legend. Love the bloke to death. With the Parramatta Eels, I can't believe how wrong I was on this one. I locked them too, and I guarantee you I won't be doing exactly the same thing this week, so keep your eyes peeled for our lock of the week this week. Even listening to Brad Arthur in the press conference, it just doesn't sound like he is willing or is even thinking about making any changes. Dylan Brown looks very out of place for me at seven, and I think there needs to be some change there. Maybe a bit of young blood. Maybe Ethan Sanders coming in there. Um, if you saw my rookie video, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Ethan Sanders and what he could offer to this team. All right, guys, let's move on to round six tips and predictions. This week, we're starting it off on Thursday night with the Knights taking on the Roosters down at McDonald Jones Stadium. And in the last 10 games between these two teams, the Roosters have the running where they have won eight out of those last 10 games. Host, though, of massive changes for the Roosters coming this week. We have Tedesco out. We have Sam Walker, who will not be available for this game. Lindsay Collins is nursing an injury. We have a lot of players already out. We've still got Lenu waiting to come back. We've got Billy Smith waiting to come back. Sandon Smith is waiting to come back. I do not know who is going to suit up in the spine for the Roosters this week. I'm assuming Joey Manu will go in there, whether that be at 5'8 or... Fullback at this point is relatively unknown. And despite the Knights having to deal with absolutely atrocious conditions, they are going to be relatively unchanged. Managed to escape that game with some relative ease in terms of injuries. Frizzell didn't play, but I'm assuming he may be back a little bit early this week. Dylan Lucas, though, in his absence was phenomenal. Yeah, this one going to be tough for me. But I tell you what, there's one thing the Roosters showed me last week and that is heart. They 
absolutely gave it to the dogs in the second half with only 12 players on the field. Nearly came back and won that game. Yep, I'm doing it early this week. The Roosters are my lock of the week. I tend to have a pretty good hit rate with Thursday games and I'm 0-2 for my Hills Cricket Academy locks and they are not happy with me at this point in time. So let's get on to the Roosters this week. They're paying $2.20 to win this game against the Knights. We've got to go the Roosters, 13+. plus. The next game in round six takes us down to Amy Park, where we've got the Storm taking on the Bulldogs. And I've got to say, the Dogs and the Storm both got pretty good wins last week, albeit by two and four points respectively. In the last 10 games between these two teams, I found it very odd that the Storm only have won six out of those last 10 games, and the Dogs are currently on a two-game winning streak against the Storm. So very interesting matchup coming this week. Unfortunately, though, for the Dogs, they are without a host of players from last week's bloodbath, and... It's not looking very good for them coming into this week. They should get Josh Adokar back, and Blake Wilson should also be available, but they are going to be missing Connor Tracy. Blake Taff, who's been pretty good for them this year. They've also got Jacob Preston still out. We are still waiting to hear if Kikau will be available. He may have picked up a leg fracture, still going for scans on that one. And also Kurt Mann will spend some time on the sideline due to a fractured hand. For the Storm, they should get Joe Chan back, and that's relatively it. They escaped last week's game with the Broncos, a pretty hard-hitting game with some minimal injuries, and that is always good news for the Storm. I expect Crichton to step into the fullback role, although I will say in reserve grade they have got a pretty promising young gun in Josh Papali'i, who can either play at 5'8", or fullback, and that is a position that they are sincerely lacking at the moment with Crichton. Once he stepped into that fullback role into the 28th minute or so, 27th minute, he didn't really offer much. And I think that um, it's maybe not a role he's used to playing in a side that isn't dominating uh, too much. I think from that point on, the Roosters pretty much dominated the next 40 minutes of the game until Matt Burton scored and pretty much squashed any chance of a comeback. Yeah, guys, I've got to go the Storm. 13 plus. Next up on Friday night, we have the Broncos taking on the Dolphins, and we all know what happened last time these two teams played at Suncorp. Katoni Staggs picked up the ball, had 90 to go, ran the length, slammed it down, and said, this is our home. And I've got to say, it was for last year, the Broncos winning both of their fixtures against the Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins come into this game not really on the back of playing some hard-hitting Premiership contending teams, let me put it out there. I do respect the fact that the Dolphins are top of the table right now, but the Broncos are a whole different beast entirely. At this point in time, though, the Broncos are missing a stack of players. We've got Piakura out. We've got Haas out. Walsh is out. Reynolds didn't finish the game last week. Dean Mariner has a back issue, and Xavier Willison also had a head knock before last week's game. On the Dolphins' side of things, well, it could be even worse for them. We've got Connolly Lemuelu maybe coming back this week, but outside that, Plath is suspended. We have Farnworth, who's hurt his potential collarbone shoulder injury. It didn't look good last week. We had Flegler not finishing the game last week. We had Kafusi picking up a hamstring injury. It is an absolute shit show, to put it bluntly uh, for these two teams on the injury reserve list right now. The thing for me with the Broncos is they play the style of footy, especially last week. They were throwing caution to the wind. They felt like they came down to Amy Park with nothing to lose against the Storm, and they threw the ball around, and a lot of stuff came off for them. Uh, a couple of plays really determined by the fact that Reynolds was on the field in that first half and then I think the Ezra Mam try a little bit lucky there and you know I don't know if they're going to cop that kind of luck every week uh, at this point in time but they put on a good show and that's what you want to see for the Dolphins well they weren't exactly strong against the Tigers they got the win but it wasn't exactly 100% convincing and for a team that's you know been a perennial uh, bottom feeder for the last few years in the Tigers. They're looking a much better side this year. I'm not too sure whether it was the Tigers being good or the Dolphins not exactly aiming up at that point in the game. Um, I like the Broncos here despite their outs. Uh, if Flegler doesn't play, then I really think the Dolphins are going to be missing some punch in the middle. And then on the other side of things, 
We've got Herbie Farnworth, who's going to come in for him. Maybe Aitken moves out to the centres. We've got Val Tavare sitting there. We've got Tessie New, who's also played a lot of centre, and he's also trained a lot at centre in the preseason. So maybe Tessie New comes in, but I've got to go the Broncos on this one. 1-12. One to twelve. We move to Saturday now, where the first matchup is a cracking one with the Warriors taking on the Manly Sea Eagles at Go Media Stadium in Auckland. And I've got to say, over the last ten games between these two teams, it's split five five right down the middle. And with the Warriors at this point in time, they're slowly starting to build into their season. You could see it on the weekend with a dominant performance over the Rabbitohs. Not to take anything away from the Seagulls, though, who got a great win over the Penrith Panthers at home to break a streak as well against Penrith. That is hard to do. And I don't care who's out for Penrith. If you get a win against them, it is a good win. Good to see Cherry Evans going into first on the all-time leaderboard for games played for the Manly Seagulls as well. What a game he had and what a crowd that turned up at Brookie. They were chanting his name from the stands and they were chanting on their boys and that was always good to see. Park footy at its best. In this game, um, very difficult for me. Um, I like the Warriors forward pack. I've said that a lot this year. Um, but Manly showed some ticker last week. Paseca had a very good game, and I also think Tafoa Sipley, who came off the bench, had a crack um, when he came on. And um, despite what my feelings are about Josh Alloyer, uh, he had a pretty good game as well. So the forward pack was really rolling for Manly. It really got him into some good positions where they were able to launch some pretty good attack at Penrith. Um, oh, this one, it's tearing um, at heartstrings for me. I, I the Warriors are the $1. fifty favourite, and I don't know whether I should doubt Manly again just because they've become the hardest team to tip this year by far. Them and the Dragons are really inconsistent every single week, and it's starting to really annoy me um, because I can't get it right. Um, in this one, though, I am going to stick with the home team in the Warriors. I think they get this one done 1-12. to the next game on Saturday is a big one for any fans of the casual athlete as my North Queensland Cowboys will be heading down to Combank Stadium to take on Longy's Parramatta Eels. Oh, the blood feud. It's going to be big, guys. We will be at the game, Longy and myself. So if you see us around, please make sure you give us a yell and make sure you show Longy your fantasy team and I'm sure he'll be able to rate it for you in person. Um, i got to say, the Cowboys... Impressed me in patches last week. Um, I just think that the Titans, they haven't really found a groove this year, and we took advantage of that. I think when Townsend went, got sin-binned, that was probably the time that I got a little bit worried in this game, and I did say um, that we made it would make it look a lot closer than it actually should have been. Um, and further, Parramatta Eels, Jesus. For any fans of our Instagram, I put up a post saying that the Eels premiership window is closed. Now, keep in mind, I have a lot of Eels fans in my life, and I promptly got a few responses in the comments section and in the DMs about putting that post up. But I just think at the moment, there's a lot of things that are very stale for me at Parramatta, and they need a bit of change. Um there's not really any game plan for when Moses is out of the side and they've come a bit to Moses reliant uh, at this point in time. And um, Dylan Brown, while he tried very hard um, against the Raiders, he seemed to be the only guy trying hard out there at the time. He had the most runs. That I mean, if you can believe that, for a number seven to be taking the most runs in a game, not what you want, not ideal. Um, they need to be backed up a little bit more. Uh, his kicking game, whilst I get it, he's trying, was far from perfect. Um Gave away way too many set restarts, and you can't do that if you're going to win games. And, and then, you know, there's just a couple of effort plays and really big moments that they just didn't own at all and just gave uh, possession back to the Raiders in really good field position. And, you know, there were a couple of really soft tries there as well that I think Brad Arthur needs to take a huge look at. And for Brad himself, um, I think that coaching this side at the moment, he's been doing it for a long time. Um, I'm wondering whether... Uh, there's a change that needs to happen there for the Eels. And whether it be this year or at the end of the year, uh, I'm not too sure. But I just think the Eels are in need for a bit of a sea change and it might do them the world of good. I'm going to go the Cowboys in this one, 1-12. to 12. 
Our Saturday night game takes us down to a core stadium where we've got the Rabbitohs taking on the Sharks. And in this one, the Rabbitohs have the better running with six out of the last 10 games between these two teams. Now, the Rabbitohs, as we saw last week, all over the shop. And Latrell Mitchell has copped a three-game ban for a forearm to Sean Johnson. And he can sit on the sidelines and think about how stupid that was. This gives an opportunity, though, for potentially a youngster to come in in the form of Jai Gray. He's been carving up at the reserve grade level of the game and also had a pretty good game in the Charity Shield match before the season started this year. A couple of other options they do have. They could throw Jack Whiten back there. They've got a young winger in Leon Tior, um that could come in uh, to play on the wing. Um, at the moment, I'm not exactly excited about any of the Rabbitohs options or their team or the way they're playing or anything like that. Um, I think Demetrius' time as coach there could be done. I mean, he was given six games uh, to turn it around by the powers that be at the Rabbitohs and hasn't started off well with a 34-4 to loss to the Warriors. So, I mean, as to quote the guru, this game could be anything at this point in time. The Sharks, they're in sitting in fourth at the moment off the bye. Um, good chance for them to get some of their big men back on the park. You know, Royce Hunt sat out the last game with Toby Rudolph and Aminuele is still dealing with a knee issue. Whether some of those guys come back this week, it will bolster their side in terms of dealing with the forward pack of the Rabbitohs, which is still pretty much intact and still has some Quite good punch in it. I think Kaloma Tungi has still been playing pretty well. Cameron Murray is class as always as well. But for me, their big issue for the Rabbitohs came in reserve grade last week as Lachlan Ilias is looking to spend quite a fair bit of time on the sideline due to a potential leg fracture. And now the Rabbitohs are stuck with their decision in Dean Hawkins, and they will have to live with that one for the time being. For the Sharks, I expect them to pick up the win here. They're the $1.43 favourite, but I tell you what, I've been wrong about the Sharks before, and they could dog me in this one. I'm going to go the Sharks, but I think it'll be close, 1-12. to Moving on to Sunday, and we've got the Tigers taking on the Dragons in our first game. And the Tigers, while they were a little bit impressive last week in patches for the game, just couldn't get it done against the Dolphins and the Dragons. Well, they were all at sea, literally the sea it looked like out at McDonald Jones Stadium. In the last 10 games between these two teams, it is split again down the middle, 5-5. And I've got to say... The Tigers are playing better, more consistent football than the Dragons at this point in time. Um, I'm really liking Api Corusau. The way he uh, deceives the defensive line, especially close to the line in the 10-metre zone, is probably unmatched by any hooker in the NRL. Maybe Harry Grant has a little bit of that, but not to the level that Api Corusau is showing at the moment. Um, and when he was off the field, it was very evident last week. Uh, they just didn't have that punch down the middle, and his testing runs of the defense are always a sight to see. For the Dragons, now, like I said with Manly, they are becoming so difficult to tip this year. They win round one. They get hammered the next two rounds. They come out and beat Manly, who just beat Penrith, and they get hammered by the Knights. And I just... I don't know what to think with the Dragons right now. Um, They can, can, play, can play some decent footy, but... You know, it's very few and far between for me, and I'm just not sure if the Dragons can step up this week and take it to a Tigers side who is full of confidence, um, and they will be looking to get another win this year and pretty much almost equal their tally, total tally of wins from last year. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a battle between two what I expect to be bottom five teams this year. I mean, I'd pick both these teams to finish 16th and 17th this year. Um, I'm liking the Tigers, but I just think the Dragons will try and do something to make sure that I don't get this one right. So I'm actually going to go the Dragons based on that. Um, I think the Dragons will get a win here, 1-12. to the final game of the round takes us down to GIO Stadium again this week where we've got the Raiders taking on the Titans. And I've got to say the Raiders were impressive against the Eels last week. I just think that they got momentum of the game and they really rolled on with it, didn't really give Parramatta a chance to come back in there. And the Titans, well, 
they were spirited, weren't they? Um, getting to within six of the Cowboys, but just couldn't put the icing on that cake. In the last 10 games between these two teams, the Raiders have the running where they have won eight out of the last 10 games and are also on a three-game winning streak against the Titans. The Titans in those three games as well have scored 20-plus points and have not managed to get the win. So I think that tells you a lot about where the Titans' defense has been in recent years. In this game, I think the Raiders, again, will get the win. The Titans, while they showed some flashes last week of brilliance, I just think it's not consistent enough to be matching it with a team like the Raiders right now who are playing very simple football. Um, They're completing their sets. They're kicking really well. Fogarty's having a great season to start as well. And um, they're defending their line. Uh, and, And that's really all you can say. Uh, about the Raiders' game plan at the moment. At the moment, it's not too flashy at all. But uh, saw some cutting plays from them this week. Tomoko and Savage were on fire. Uh, Schiller had a very good game as well. For the Titans, I just don't see where it's going to come at this point in time. Foran didn't finish the game, despite rumours that he might come out after half time. He didn't end up taking the field. And I thought AJ Brimson actually did well with him off the field. Um, that's actually kind of where they started to take over the game a little bit, um, gain a bit of momentum back. And Brimson really put them in a position to potentially win that game. Uh, so I think he's got to get his hands more on the ball uh, at this point. Um not seen too much from Jaden Campbell to suggest that he should be playing fullback over AJ Brimson right now, but Brimson's defense out at center, again, you can't play him everywhere. Uh, he was great on Val Holmes in the centers to start the game and then moved into 5 8 and nearly brought the Titans back to the lead of that game as well. So um, he's an unbelievable player and he's got to have his hands on the ball a little bit more. But in this game, I've got to go with the Raiders 13 plus. So that's it for the video this week, guys. What did you think about my tips? Let me know down in the comment section below. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. We bring out so much content each and every week just for you guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.